Good morning and thank you for joining me today. We are going to pivot for a while. We've been in the Psalms for a very long time and we finished Psalm 34. Today we are going to start our way through the book of First Peter in the New Testament. Uh, I think as you look through this study with me, uh, it'll be a very relevant uh, book and topics to deal with and uh, that, that relate to our lives today, the circumstances of our lives today. In particular, uh, verse one that we look at today, um, strength for the weary. Well, let's pray. We'll get into the verse here and uh, we'll be taught by our Lord, I'm sure. Father, we ask you to speak through your word by the Holy Spirit to point us more faithfully and fully to your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for your word and its power and its truth and its strength for our day. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Paul, or I'm sorry, Peter writing this, First Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. Now, Peter is writing this letter to people who have been dispersed. A, an outbreak of persecution has taken place and people are now displaced from their homes and from their place of birth or where they had called their residence. And they've had to scatter. They've had to scatter for their own safety because Christians are being persecuted. They're being arrested, they're being beaten, and they're even being killed. And Peter here is exploring the fact that living for Jesus is not always an easy endeavor. There are difficulties and hardships that we must face. In particular, there are inner hardships, our own wrestling with our old habits. Before we met Jesus, our body has been well-trained. Our mind has been well-trained. Our lives and lips have been well-trained to act in a certain way that obviously was not glorifying to God. And so once we are born anew in Christ, we have a new heart, we must develop a new mind, and we must develop a new way of walking and living. And so there are the inner struggles, but obviously there are the outer struggles and pressures as well. People that hate us, people that reject us, people that revile us, people that mock us for knowing and loving Jesus. And people especially, they get really, really peeved because of the moral standard that we believe, we know that God has told us in his word that we're to live by and that God wants to call all people to live according to. So Peter writes this letter to encourage, to instruct, and to strengthen believers that are growing weary amid the struggles and pressures of life. Can you relate to the struggles and pressures of life? I'm sure you can. Peter could. Peter was one who was a fisherman. Jesus called him. He leaves everything to follow Jesus. And yet there are times when Peter really shines. He confesses Christ as the Savior. And then he rejects and denies him. Peter has had his own ups and downs. We also have our ups and downs. These believers in this dispersion had ups and downs. So friends, throughout this letter, I hope and pray that you are going to see and to hear and to know and encounter and to enjoy and allow your life to be built upon the steadfast anchor of our souls, the rock foundation of our faith that is Jesus Christ, that will hold us steady amid the storms of life, that will strengthen us in the midst of the struggles. When we are growing weary and walking with Jesus, that God has strength and hope for you. So friends, by way of intro, that's where we're going. That's what we're going to look at. And I know that you will be greatly encouraged in a very practical way in your walk with Jesus through this letter of 1 Peter. I'll see you again tomorrow.